Praise Him, praise Him, the King of glory, praise Him. Praise Him, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Hello, brothers and sisters. Happy Sunday. Welcome back to my channel. My name is Teresa, and I'm happy to have you here. And we're going to have a quick Sunday gospel reflection as usual. And we begin with a prayer to the Holy Spirit. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful and kindle in them the fire of your love. Send forth your spirit and they shall be created and you shall renew the face of the earth. Let us pray. O God, who by the light of the Holy Spirit did instruct the hearts of the faithful, grant that by the same Holy Spirit we may be truly wise and ever rejoice in his consolation through Christ our Lord. Amen. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And let's sing a hymn of praise. We're going to sing praise to the Lord. Praise to the Lord, the Almighty, the King of creation. Oh, my soul, praise him, for he is our health and salvation. Oh, you who hear, now to his presence draw near, join in profound adoration. Today's Gospel reading for this third Sunday of Lent, we read about how Jesus predicted his resurre resurrection. We're going to be reading from the Gospel of St. John, chapter 2, verses 13 through 25. I'm not going to read the whole thing, but I encourage all of us to go back and read and meditate on God's word. But I'm just going to pick a few highlights here. Every part of the, the word of God is important, but because of time, we're just going to do a quick reflection as always. Since Passover of the Jews was near, Jesus went up to Jerusalem. He found in the temple area those who sold oxen, sheep, and doves, as well as the money changers seated there temple area they sold these for the Passover for those who came to buy them and what did Jesus do he made a whip out of cords and drove them all out of the temple area with the sheep and the oxen and spilled the coins of the money changers and overturned their tables and to those who sold doves he said take these out of here and stop making my father's house a marketplace Anything that is of God must be kept holy. Not just holy in a physical sense of just, okay, we are going to obey the law of, okay, keeping this space holy. But in every sense of the word, everything about God is holy. Everything about God concerning us must be holy. So even though it is legal to have these things, maybe... For them to sell the things there according to their law then but god's house is a holy place and that's what jesus was trying to bring to them we have to pay attention to the holy spirit god must come first how are we serving him is what we are doing is what we are doing in obedience to god or are we just simply following the the custom or what we are supposed to be doing and not thinking about it. Are we thinking about the holiness of everything that concerns God and is God first? So in this situation, how does it apply to me? I must see everything as putting God first, no matter what, no matter how big 
an issue is, no matter how small an issue is, God must be first. Whatever we are doing must relate to God because God is everything. He is sovereign. He rules over everything. So that's, for me, the lesson God is giving me here. That he comes first. No matter what, we're, okay, we're selling these to help people who need to buy it to make their sacrifices. No. Are we keeping God's house holy? Let's talk about ourselves. We are, holy, we are temples of God. Are we keeping ourselves holy? Let's ponder on that in this day and age where there's so much to distract us, so much to pollute people. We have to always ask the Holy Spirit to Help us to only walk in the light of Christ, not in the light of the, not in the world. There's no light in the world. Christ is our light, not in the dictates of the world, not in just following the letter of the law, but following the Holy Spirit. Because when the Holy Spirit guides us, we can't move from God's will. We stay always in his will when the Holy Spirit is guiding us. And Mother Mary is our perfect example. She said, let thy will be done. She said, be done to me according to thy word. So if we are saying in everything we do, be done to me according to thy word, we'll be keeping God's house holy. We'll be paying attention to not just obey God's commandments, just, oh, okay, I'm told to do this. So I'll just do it because I'm told to do it. No, you're going to do it because you love God. You love him and you want to do everything to please him. Amen. Okay. Let me continue reading. And Jesus told them to take that out of there. And then this is what his disciples said. I thought this was so powerful. His disciples recall the words of scripture, which said, zeal for your house will consume me. Are we zealous for the things of God? Are we zealous about the things of God? Are we zealous about God? Let's ponder on that this week. In everything we are doing, is God first? Are we zealous about him? And remember, we can't do anything of our own. It is who? The Holy Spirit. Amen. So then Jesus continues and Jesus, and then the Jews asked for a sign. And Jesus answered and said, destroy this temple and in three days I will raise it up. The temple Jesus was talking about was not the physical temple but his own body. And that's what scripture tells us. But he was speaking about the temple of his body. Therefore, when he was raised from the dead, his disciples remembered that he said this and they came to believe the scripture and the word Jesus had spoken. While he was in Jerusalem for the feast of Passover, many began to believe in his name when they saw the signs he was doing. Are we waiting for signs before believing in Jesus? Let's not do that. Jesus is real. Jesus is real. He's told us, trust in me. During this Lenten season, let us trust in Jesus. Let us, let us be holy. Let us call on the Holy Spirit. Make us holy. Help us to put God first no matter what. Let us put God first. Let us follow his law with love, love for him. Let us do it out of love for him, out of love for our neighbors. Amen. Short and sweet. And let us sing a hymn to Christ. And we are going to sing Nearer My God to Thee. Nearer my God to Thee, nearer to Thee, even though it be a cross that raised me. Still all my song shall be nearer, my God, to thee, nearer, my God, to thee, nearer to thee. Amen. One more thing. Um, in today's readings, I loved, I loved the responsorial psalm and the psalmist said our response was lord you have the words of everlasting life may god give us the grace to always listen to him and do his will in and may god's will be done in our lives in jesus name amen god is good all the time and all the time god is good have a very blessed and fantastic 
third week of Lent. By God's grace, I'll see you next Sunday. And we pray the grace together, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit rest and abide with us now and forevermore. Amen. And surely God's goodness and mercy shall pursue us all the days of our lives and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever and ever. Amen. God bless you. Pray for me to our Lord Jesus Christ as I pray for you too. Amen. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Goodbye.